We're here with Josh Payne. Josh, can you tell everybody where you tattoo at and what city you work in? Yeah, um, I work at a new studio with a friend of mine named Tom Bullman in Cortland, New York called Alchemist Art Studios. We just opened it up recently, a little private thing between the two of us, and it's been an awesome little ride so far. Where did you work at previously? Uh, I owned a studio called Ascend Gallery for, I think, almost six years. Same town. You know, it's back up where I grew up and stuff like that, and just got to where I, I didn't want to be the boss, and I didn't want to do that side of stuff, and so I kind of backed out, and then when Tom wanted to open something, it just made sense to kind of tag along with him. How long has uh, the new shop been open? Alchemist, I think we've been up and running for a little over two months now. Mm -hmm. We've been watching your progress of opening the new shop, yeah. and I knew that after all your recent happenings, you opened the new shop up. Yep. Um, what benefits do you see being a versatile artist versus being so narrow. So that's a really interesting thing with me in particular in this industry is I think that a lot of people, especially in modern tattooing, were artists who became tattooers. Where I was just a young kid that, I, I mean, I doodled, but I, didn't, I wasn't an artist and I got into tattooing to use it just to make money to go to college, things of that nature. And so I just kind of started as a tradesman and if people came through, it was kind of just like, all right, I guess I got to try to figure out how to do that. So I never saw myself becoming a big tattooer. I never saw myself even being able to figure it out to any degree of where I'm at now. So my ability to be as versatile is kind of just coincidental more than anything. And I think it's great because my mentality, if I did the same style every day, I'd lose my mind. I, I just couldn't do it. So I love knowing that every single day is a totally new project and it keeps it fresh and fun. And as far as clientele list, obviously, I'd have no boundaries to who may be intrigued to get tattooed by me because I can transcend all different genres. Yeah, it opens up a lot more doors. I mean, when we see your work pretty often, it's always something different, whether it's a large scale piece versus a smaller scale mm -hmm. piece or the difference in styles. You don't ever seem to be doing the same stuff over and over. Yeah, there was, there was a point where I got doing snake heads and stuff for a while. And people really dug them and it was cool and it was a fun little run. But throughout my whole career, if I get to where my emails start to look repetitive, I'll kind of purposely filter that right out because I don't want to get caught doing a niche. I don't ever want to lose my love and passion for this. So by staying this open, I'm, you know, I'm tattooing now 16, 17 years and I love it more now than I ever have. So I think that's part of what keeps it fresh and fun for me. If you could choose one of the styles to focus on, let's say you had to choose one style for the rest of your career, which one would it be? I think it'd be a really tough call to go between illustrative, which I think leaves you still pretty broad, or Japanese. I just, I really love doing Japanese work, but people, don't, I don't show it real often because I kind of, so I think it's that one thing I like for myself that I like to keep it for myself. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, as I know you've been browbeat with questions about Ink Master. I'm yeah. going to ask you a few just because. Yep. Uh, how did you like the show? Uh, was it a positive, negative experience? Um, would you do it again? I think it's a really positive thing. In a lot of ways, it sucks that the public only gets to see what an editor decides they want to see. We went in, all of us, and I thought it was going to be a joke. Like, I went in expecting it to be the stupid thing, and I was like, screw it, it'd just be a fun ride. But it's, it's real. You're doing super fun, weird art projects. You're getting thrown way out of your comfort zone. You're getting to live and work with up to 20 other artists, you know, and, and whether you think some are great or some are bad or whatever, you can learn from everybody. So I went on a two month art camp and got to spend every day drawing and talking and discussing and everything art with other people that are as passionate as I am. So if you go in with that kind of mindset, it was a really, really good experience. And I feel like I learned a lot while I was there. Do you, how do you deal with the you know, obviously with social media, mm -hmm. you get a variety of positive and negative feedback. I'm sure there's a lot of people who sent you messages saying you <laughs> yeah. deserve to win for whatever reason. Yep. How do you deal with the negative feedback? Do you even bother looking at it or do you... I read everything. Yeah. I, oh, I read every like five different platforms. Yeah. I read all of it. Um, I enjoyed a lot of it because I think it's funny. It's comical. You know, to base your opinion on someone on a television show is ignorant, you know? So... It, you know, it is what it is and like everybody in the world is going to have people that love you and people that hate you and if you let the negative bother you then that's just a waste of your time and you're going to let them win that way. So for me it just kind of rolls off my back and it's like 
everybody has the right to not like me if you don't like me. That's totally your prerogative, you know? Well, so I don't care. Were well, there any stuff in the show that you were unhappy the way they portrayed you? They definitely made me out to be the villain, for sure. You know, they made it look like I was this argumentative asshole. I've never been in a fight in my life. I don't argue with people. I don't raise my voice with people. I just think it's stupid. So that side was kind of... You know, it is what it is. But other than that, you know, with the power editing, you can snip me making snarky little faces. You could, and it's like, that's just, it wasn't relative to what really happened. So they definitely like hammed it up to make it look worse. And half the time I'm like, just show other people, man. Leave me alone it's, for a bit. Yeah, you're almost at their discretion. Yeah. Regardless of how you act, it, they can make it seem like. Oh, for sure. You were an asshole, whether you were nice to mm -hmm. her, whether you're a pushover. Yep. Um, how, so you do a variety of pieces you do a lot of large scale pieces mm -hmm. sometimes you do one shot pieces what's the ratio that you typically have of large to small pieces oh 90 percent large um it, the rare times i get to do single sitting tattoos is awesome but i don't and, and people don't assume i do it so i don't get asked for it um i love large bodies of work i think they're great they're beautiful they're they're really something to be proud to put your name on when they're done but some of them, you know, you start a back piece, you've got extensive work, you understand. It's, it's, you know, multiple sittings. It's year, two years, three years. And sometimes putting your mindset back to where you were two years ago, three years ago, is kind of tricky. And you're like, man, I would draw it differently now and things like that. So it's, it's hard to keep your focus on really big stuff. And I think if I could, and I actually told my, my booking manager to start kind of trying to filter out the real big stuff. I would love to do two sitting things, you know, things like that, where you can get in, get the first day, get it mapped in, get the second day just make it tight as hell. And I think I, would, I think I would like that a lot more in the big picture. So, let's say you can give your advice, give yourself advice to a fresh Josh Payne. Yeah. What kind of advice would you give yourself? Man, it's hard to say because like I did everything wrong you possibly could have in the beginning of this industry. I was an egotistical asshole. I, I bumped people the wrong way. I was, I was very in your face. I was very like all of that. But all of those things that I did made me who I am now. So it's like I'm, I'm very happy where I'm at. So I don't know if I would want to change anything. One of the things I think when I get asked a lot of like what can I work on to be a better tattooer that I always tell everybody is patience. The number one thing I've learned in life is patience. You know, I used to think, get in, get out, make it big, make it pop, blah, blah, blah. But man, just slowing yourself down, it's amazing how much better a tattoo looks with that extra hour, that extra two hours. So that was one of the hardest, longest lessons for me to learn was that. I think that would be one of the main differences. Um, I know you, know you probably have had a lot of influences through your tattoo career. Can big you time. name a few people that have really helped you progress? as a artist and as a person? It's, yeah, you know, it's, I've been blessed to work and, and get tattooed by some of the best of the best. I mean, the, one of the biggest ones, and, and I let him know it all the time, was, is Russ Abbott. I got tattooed by Russ, God, it's gotta be 12 years ago now, probably. And it was one of the first times I got to sit down and one-on-one -on -one be with someone that I respected to that level. And you know, and he talked to me at that point as an equal, and we really had a lot of long talks. And I remember we had another night in, in Detroit, I think it was a Detroit Expo. And he's like, congratulations, Josh, you're at a point now where you have to start thinking about materials and objects and, and values and things. He's like, you've gotten to where you're a good tattooer, and if you want to be great, you, it's a whole new world. And that way of thinking, you know, to go back on what I touched base on earlier, I'm not an artist, so to think that I'm even in a caliber to try to be at the level of these people was like mind blowing. And all of a sudden it like shook up everything and I'm like, oh man, this is a whole new, a whole new animal. And it's kind of in those two moments where I'm like, it's time to throw away everything I knew and start fresh again. And that was good. But I mean, aside from that, um, Gunner is a guy I looked up to forever. I've had good long talks with him. And then just, you know, I mean, it's, there's a, a world of names a mile long that'd be hard to go through. Yeah, I mean, it's like your colleagues and your friends who are mm -hmm. in the industry who you see all the time and they help push you mm -hmm. as an artist. But at the same time, there's so many people that you just probably can't name them. It's, the yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's like awesome. Russ's, Russ's was a big one. I remember being here at the Richmond Expo. 12 years ago probably at this point and I you know a young idiot kid and I remember I brought my portfolio up to Joe Cap and was like hey man what do you think and he went through it and he was blunt I mean if you've ever talked to Joe you know how he is you know and I love people like that and he was like yeah man you do half a cool tattoo and then you shit out this stuff and it makes your whole thing look stupid quit shitting out half of it you know that type of mentality and it's like 
damn, you're right. And you know, I'll never forget that. It was a lady face and the face was cool. The hair was garbage. And he's like, if, if this part doesn't work, it doesn't matter how great that is. And you know, that's one of those lessons that I'll, I'll never forget. I remember what the booth I was sitting in and everything talking to him. And you know, it's just, it's that, those type of moments when you get to one-on-one -on -one with someone you respect and they have the time to be real with you, it, it really can open up a lot of things. Uh, coming from a non-tattoo artist, I mean, I know Russ is really pushing the industry mm -hmm. in a digital format. Mm -hmm. Do you stick with the pencil and paper method, or have you moved over to the Wacom and the iPad? I've iPad? I've been digital for the last two, three years or so. I've worked on Russ with or with Russ on a bunch of tattoo smart stuff, things like that. Um, I find myself teaching a lot of people things on Procreate and on the iPad, which is funny because I'm like the most technologically idiot you'll ever meet in the world um but there's just an organic nature to feeling a pencil on paper you know i find myself going back to it a lot and i just it's, it's kind of this flip-flop world where a lot of times with digital you find it as a crutch to almost be easy to be like okay well i'm just gonna let me photoshop in this thing i'll do a quick trace let me photo you know and then it's it works but you, you lose that you lose that you-ness in your art sometimes doing it that way. So like literally the last two weeks, I've really been pushing myself to have my references on my phone and I'm drawing here and forcing that separation and letting the art kind of come out of me more naturally as opposed to kind of like taking the easy route sometimes. Um, let's say you could change, let's say, what are one good and bad thing about the tattoo industry? I was asked a question recently, and, I, and I'm pretty vocal about this concept of what do I think about the difference between a tattooer and a tattoo artist? And my answer was I hate that there is a difference. A lot of people are losing sight of the fact that your clientele is all you have. It's all you are. You know, and we are, in my opinion, first and foremost, a service industry. We are people whose job is to have a client come in and you, have, you should be able to give them what they want. Some of us are very blessed and very lucky to have enough people coming that you can pick and choose and you can start steering your direction, you know? And, but what I hate is seeing younger artists go, oh, well, you need a style. So right out the gate, I'm gonna throw away all of this stuff. Me being a versatile artist, I think I'm very big testament to the fact that if you don't pigeonhole yourself and you just learn how to tattoo, it, it'll make everything you do better. You know, and I feel like there's so many people that lose so much knowledge that they could gain because they'll never touch a Japanese tattoo. They'll never touch a new school tattoo. They'll never try to just color bomb, saturate something. Like, I want to be a realism guy. Or I want to be a this guy. And it's like, there's a whole nother world that couples in. And, and for me, I did, a, I did a seminar a couple years back in Denmark. And the way it, I started it off is I had two pictures on a screen. I go, what's the difference between these two tattoos? Nothing. What's the difference between these two tattoos? Nothing. Did like 10 of them. And then when I zoomed out, it was like one's traditional and one was a Nico Hurtado portrait. And they're, I'm like, what's the difference? So like, oh, well, you know, this is way harder. I go, I go, 10 minutes ago, y'all said there was nothing different. I go, it's needle, ink, skin. If you can learn how to use those three things, then the only problem you'll have is at the drawing board. Because if you know how to tattoo, you can tattoo anything. And I think people kind of lose sight of that. During your apprenticeship, did, you, did they have focus <laughs> on? I mean, like, can you, okay, let's describe your apprenticeship. I am one of the people that had no apprenticeship. I've never been formally taught by anybody. Um, I bought tattoo equipment and started tattooing myself out of my bedroom when I was 15 years old. And then I moved on to some buddies and, and things like that. And then I spent like two years in a shitty biker shop that like they're building a motorcycle here and I'm tattooing like five feet away. You know, and I worked there and I think I was like four years into tattooing when I left there and I'm like, I quit at that. I'm like, dude, I'm done with this. Like, this is awful. And then I moved and I was gonna be a car salesman because I'm like, I can bullshit and sell stuff. So fuck it, I got that. And I ran out of money. So I found another street shop in the little town of Wilmington I was in, started working. And that was the first time I started tattooing like people with my similarities, college kids, things like that. People were more fun. I'm like, okay, this, this is a lot more real. And this is something I think I could see myself doing. And at that point I decided like, if I'm gonna give this a go, I wanna give it 100%. And I was just upstairs talking with Josh Bowers about how for probably a three year window, I would find four or five tattoos a day that I loved. And I would find that one spot. Cause a tattoo can be beautiful, but there's always one thing that's like, that's, that's what makes it. And I would zoom those four or five pieces in to where I was looking at a one inch square and my computer screen was those five tattoos. And every night I would fall asleep going, what liner, what setup, what color, what this, what that. And 
after enough time, you start to see it. You start seeing similarities. You start seeing how people break it down. And I've always kind of told myself that I'm like, I feel like I'm a really good clone artist. Like I can see things and I can, I can make it work. I can break it down. I can micromanage it back out and I can figure out how to achieve that. Where me still, I still feel like I'm trying to figure out what I do. You know, but if you say you want something, I can make it look like that. So that's my apprenticeship was just my absolute diligence of going. If, if you as a client is going to come to me and you're going to spend X amount of time working to raise the money, you're going to choose me out of the thousands and thousands of artists, then you deserve the respect as a client for me to give everything I could possibly give. And I just, you know, I never let myself slow down and I never stopped. And it was all an internal drive that got me to where I'm at now. Did you have anybody who tried to encourage you to focus on one style? Everybody's told me to focus on one style. My whole career, I still get it, you know? And I'm at a point now where like, I feel like people should be like, just let him go, man, he's doing his thing. But it's like daily, I still hear, man, if you would do one style. You'd be exceptional. Yeah, you'd be exceptional. And I remember Nate Evans bringing Nate back up too. You know, he told me, he's like, why do you do so many styles? I'm like, well, I want to be versatile. Like if I open a restaurant, I'm not only going to sell a steak. I go, I'm going to have options or you're going to lose clientele. And then I remember he goes, yeah, but you could be a Morton's and instead you're more of an Applebee's. And I'm like, damn, you know, and I got to laugh. And that day I did a really cool tattoo. I remember what it was, it was a Japanese um, Kieran. And when he, was, when he looked at it, he's like, see, that thing's awesome. He goes, if I could do tattoos like that, I would. And I go, spend some days in the Applebee's kitchen. You might learn a few tricks, you know? And that's, that's what it was, you know? And I never looked at needing to be great tomorrow. It was, it's, it's, a, it's the long run, you know? It's a marathon in this industry, not a sprint. Do you recommend that young tattoo artists and their apprenticeship to, I mean, it, it's important for them to try to have a variety of styles, mm -hmm. just so they can get a sense of saying, you know, when they walk into their apprenticeship, I'm a traditional artist, mm -hmm. straight from the bat. While they should be doing a variety of styles, mm -hmm. but at what point should they try to pick their style? I, I, I feel like it should just kind of come organically, really. Because I see people that pick a style and they're like, I like those tattoos. There's tattoos I love, but I'm not going to tattoo them. You know, bio, you know, and I'll do bio once in a while, but I'm not. That's, that's one world that I don't tread in much. And I, I think it's gorgeous. I love looking at it. I love all that, but I know that that's not me. And if I was, you know, 17, 18, and I'm like, I love bio, so I want to be a bio guy. I would have missed out on realizing that what I really truly enjoy is doing the illustration side, creating characters, creating emotion and stuff. And that's a lot more fun for me. So I feel like by pitching yourself early, you might miss the big picture of what you should be and what you may be. So obviously being on the show, I hate to bring it up again, yeah. but um, competitive nature comes out. Yeah. Do you think being competitive is a positive or negative thing in the industry? It's, man, that's a tough one because there's both sides. So when I was younger, I'm, I'm very competitive. I grew up, I played three sports a year since I was, you know, a little kid. Um, I'm one of five boys. You know, we grew up in the country. Everything was a competition. You know, that's the way it was. So that's, that's what's ingrained in me. And in the beginning, what I mentioned earlier about being kind of egotistical, kind of an asshole, it's like you put me in a place like an expo and you tell me that there's a trophy. I want to win that. And it got to a point where, you know, for a while I had blinders on to the big picture of like, hey man, like the trophy's cool and I'm glad I won them and, and winning them has helped get me to where I'm at now. You know, notoriety and all that. But the bigger thing is, is doing good tattoos. So it's, there's, there's a pro and a con to both sides, really. I think go out there and give it hell, but don't do it at the sacrifice of your own integrity and the work that you're putting on your clients. That makes sense. Um, what do you think that you bring to tattooing that somebody else doesn't? Whew, man. I kind of always like to think of the fact that if I was to die tomorrow, people would go, that dude could just tattoo. You know, I don't want to be like, that dude was a dope portrait guy, or that dude was a badass Japanese guy. I want to be like, that guy just tattooed. I think in a lot of ways, like my work ethic is something that I feel like people should look up to and, and try to strive for. Like, man, I, I'm still doing 10 hours a day, five days a week, six days a week. You know, and I keep telling myself I want to slow down, but it's not, it's not even about the money anymore. I have so many clients that I'm like, dude, give me a couple hundred bucks, whatever. I don't care. I just love learning. I love putting myself out there. So I guess like, I think I used to try to get everybody to be the way I am, especially with like my people that worked under me and stuff. And I've learned that, you know, we're all artists on our own path. So I guess all I can do is hope that I inspire somebody to push themselves harder. Um, can you talk about what projects that you have in regards to the remaining 2018, early 2019? 
Whew, I only plan, I book a month ahead. I don't plan ahead. I barely even plan conventions ahead. Um, I don't even know what I'm tattooing until the week before. My manager picks everything for me. I don't even choose what I'm doing. And I'm like, I kind of enjoy that, that funness of it. Um, I know that I'm doing a convention in Charlotte. I'm gonna be at the Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico Expo again in December, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I think I'm ready to start painting and trying. I love paintings and it's just the most frustrating, like just angry thing in the world whenever I do it. But other than that, I've, I'm just trying to like kind of refine myself and refocus and getting to work with Tom Bullman and how tight and clean and sharp and prepared he is. It's like, it's really kind of lit a new fire under my ass. And I still feel like I'm scratching the surface of what my ability is gonna be. So I'm really excited to see, what you know. What conventions do you like doing? Uh, I always like to do the Hell City shows. I think Derb puts on a really, really nice expo. Um, aside from that, it's it's more like I like the smaller, more intimate ones. I like 60 booth shows, I, you know, that type of thing. And it, and it brings us all back to where we as artists get together and we hang out and we talk. And, and you really, that's where you're really spitballing and, and learning a lot more. You know, some of these big conglomerate expos that are huge is like, you go in, you sit down, you put your head down. You can't even walk to the bathroom because there's too many people. And it's like, by the time you leave that weekend, yeah, you tattooed, yeah, you maybe you entered a, tat a thing, but it's like, you, did, you didn't get anything. Yeah, you didn't learn. So for me, like I kind of pick and choose both on places I haven't been and like small little intimate expos that are just a lot more personable. What do you enjoy doing outside of tattooing during your free time? <sighs> I keep hearing that that's a thing. Yeah. Um, no, I got a... I, you smoke cigars quite Yeah, that's, that's my way of shutting my brain off for 45 minutes. Um, I got my awesome little dog now. He's the man, you know, so I get to hang out and play with him. Um, got a couple motorcycles. Uh, pretty much try to be outside as much as possible. Nature stuff, like I mean, where I live, it's, it's country as far as you can where see. You and it looks beautiful. Yeah, there's lakes, there's mountains, there's hiking, there's waterfalls, there's all of it. So it's like, why well, sit inside if, if you can be out there and see in the world? Uh, so if anybody's interested in getting tattooed by you, um, yep. how should they get in touch with you? And what's your, what's your vetting process? The best way to get a hold of me, the only way to get a hold of me is through an email. And, and I make posts about this. Email doesn't mean Facebook Messenger. It doesn't mean DM. It means an actual physical email. Um, all my information is on my social media pages, but it's just Josh Payne Tattoo at Gmail. Try to make it as easy as possible for people. And in which case, you're going to send that email in. Be thorough. Be direct. You know, Let me know what you want to do. Um, and then you're going to talk to my assistant Maggie, she'll kind of bounce back and forth and I always do like one month at a time and that allows me still to have the freedom to kind of live my own life. I have to ask the question before we end, yeah. since you mentioned it before we started, <laughs> can you tell the silverback story? I, I, I had this long running thing where I was debating with Jonathan Penchoff, Nate Evans and my buddy George Perm about who would win a fight between a silverback gorilla and a polar bear and I tend to be competitive and like to prove my point and after about three weeks of fighting them on this I had them convinced that the silverback would win and then we got the opportunity to do a little behind the scenes visit of the Sydney Zoo in which case I asked the primate specialist and I was very very sternly told I was wrong it's, and I've yet to live that down. The Sydney Zoo is gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. Beautiful. So that was a great great time. We got to we tattooed one of the zookeepers there and they gave us a very off the off the books behind the scenes trip around that zoo. I got to lay with kangaroos. I was holding different animals all that. I mean it was there was places that we probably weren't supposed to be in, and it was, it was definitely an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, uh, I went there a couple years ago, and it was beautiful, and Penchoff told me that story last year. Yep. And of course, he went way into detail about oh, it. Yeah. You guys yelling at each yep. other about it. And it's, 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 it's times like that and stories that we have that you know, I wish the younger artists would get, and that's where, you know, I get frustrated with some of these younger people that their work ethic's a little this, a little that, and if you talk to most artists, I mean, you've done plenty of these. Most of us came from nothing. Most of us came from, you know, poor enough families. You know, we didn't have a future, we didn't have a thing, and this industry is an absolute blessing. You know, it's given us a world beyond our wildest imaginations. And you know, I came from a place where, you know, I grew up on Payne Road because no one left that area. That's, you know, that's what it was. And to, to enter an industry like this and, and have it do what it does, it's like, I think a lot of these younger kids, I'm not one to say, oh, respect the past, respect this, respect that, but it's like, respect the fact that you just won the lottery, you know, and it's just gonna require a little bit of work and a little bit of love. And if you, if you appreciate it and you put that into it, it's gonna give you something you could never dream 
of getting, you know? And that's, that's why I love it to this point. And that's where, you know, my passion and my frustration with some people stems from because I see them almost taking it for granted what they have. And it's like, man, if you had, if you only knew, you know, and I mean, I worked, I worked construction with my old man and it's like, I know what a day work is. It sucks. Yeah. So if I could hang out and the worst thing I do is have to stand up and my back hurts a little bit at the end of the day and do what I do, it's pretty cool, man. So that's, that's one of my biggest things that I wish kids would take out of this industry is like, don't look at the fame, don't look at this, don't look at that. Just look at the fact that if you put it in and you put in that work and that effort, you can literally go beyond anything that you ever imagined possible. No, that's a good way to end it. Um, we appreciate you taking the time Absolutely. to sit down with us. We're huge fans of your work. Thank we you. always look at what you're doing. Um, try to follow you pretty closely. Um, <laughs> so thank you for taking thank the you. time to talk with us. Yeah. And we appreciate and it. Thank you guys for doing this for the industry and you keeping it exposed and letting people and see what's happening out there. So uh, give back to an industry that's given so much to everybody. Absolutely. So. Thank you, my man. Thank you.